Okay, guys. So, hello. Good day. So, our topic for the second grading now is infiltration and embedding. And so, the good news about this topic is they have the same uh, media that they use, the same impregnating and embedding media. However, bad news, two parts to, guys. So, simulan natin. So, just a review. So, now... After clearing, we are now in impregnation or also known as infiltration and now embedding, okay? So, an important step between them is orientation, okay? And actually, orientation is, uh, is under embedding. One important part of embedding is orientation. You have to arrange the tissue precisely in the paraffin wax, okay? So that uh, we could see the layers of the tissue, we could discern the different layers. You should properly and precisely arrange it in the embedding mold para makita yung lahat ng layers ng tissue, okay? So, ibig sabihin dapat yung tissue, kung baga guys, is nakaharap, hindi nakatalikod, okay? Siyempre, pag back view, kung, kung baga ha, so kung back view siya, hindi mo na makikita yung mga layers. So, the layer should be facing the uh, mold, okay? It should be arranged in such a way, pag tumigas yung tissue block, dapat nakikita yung mga Layer. So that is orientation and I want to emphasize on that topic. So malaking part ng discussion natin yan on part 2. Okay, so our topic right now is impregnation and embedding. So andito na tayo. So just uh, an overview. So we're finished on fixing. So before fixing is uh, grossing. So fixing is the most important part of tissue processing, isn't it? Then, guys, if it's automated, so their tissue processor, so there is a bit of fixing in a tissue processing, then dehydration, decalcification, wala, dehydration, clearing, yan, and infiltration, yan, ginagawa yan ng automatic tissue processor. Hanggang infiltration lang po, okay? And embedding, guys, kung may budget, ang laboratory is my embedding center or my embedding area. Yan, so, ganda ng embedding center. Let, we will see it later. So, separate po ang um embedding okay it's outside the tissue processor then now is cutting or microtomy so we will use a microtome so there are different types of microtome there is a rotary microtomes um vibrating microtome and cryostat so cryostat is a frozen cabinet which houses a um, microtome inside, okay? So, pang ano yun, frozen section. So, just, I just want to show you. So, iba rin ang makina pang staining, okay? If it's automated and microscopic examination. So, ganun. So, guys, tingnan nyo tong tissue slide na to. So, you could see, since the tissue was oriented properly, you could now uh, see the different layers and the different parts. So, orienting, arranging the, the tissue properly will uh, will affect what your tissue looks like. Pag-aaral natin na yan today. So, what is, so, first part is infiltration or impregnation. So, coming from the word infiltrate, di ba? Pumapasok, impregnate, di ba? A pregnant woman has a baby inside her womb. Yan. So, when we say infiltration and impregnation, so your tissue, guys, example, itong uh, sponge na to, it, it's a tissue. Guys, your sponge, and just like your tissue, guys, has holes, have holes or cavities. May mga butas, guys. And guys, it needs support, okay? So that it will not crumble. It will not crumble. It will not uh, crumble. It will not, hindi siya babagsak. 
upon cutting, guys, it needs support. You need to infiltrate. You need to fill up the holes or the cavity. It needs support, okay? So, kailangan mong pasukan ng medium, ng medium, specifically, most common is paraffin wax, yung mga butas to provide support so that the tissue will not crumble, okay? So, ayun. So, yun yung talagang pinaka-main function ng infiltration and impregnation. And guys, so other than that, it also removes the clearing reagent. The clearing reagent must be completely removed, okay? Why? Because the paraffin wax or the embedding medium will not harden properly if there is a clearing agent left in your tissue, okay? So, it should displace Tanggalin ang clearing agent, okay? And what else, guys? Since you place a support on the tissue, it is now easier to handle and easier to cut, okay? It is firmer, okay? So imagine cat cutting, sabi natin, isang chicharon, di ba? Chicharon. So ang raming butas ng chicharon. So... <laughs> <laughs> Ewan, tama yung ginaam ko. Parang sponge, guys. So, yun nga, may mga cavity siya, may buta siya, it crumbles upon cutting. Okay? Pero pag finil up mo yung mga butas, it has a supporting medium, and then it's easier and firmer, and it's better to slice. Ang galing, no? And what happens when you inadequately impregnate something, okay? So, the clearing agent is not removed, yan. It is soft, it is crumbly, yan. It, it's crumbly. Ano may sabi mo lang crumbly? Parang, ano nga, uh, parang cookies, di ba? It's crumbly, parang naghiwalay-hiwalay, yan. And tissue blocks crumble when section, when section and break up when floated in a water bath. So, madali siyang masira. Ayan. Mamaya, tignan natin yung flotation, what happens in flotation. So, when impregnation is not done properly, class, your tissue crumbles. It's difficult to cut it. Ayan. It floats out of the water bath. Ayan, nasisira. Madali. So, madali masira. So, guys, this is a tissue without a... a without yet a infiltrating medium or impregnating medium. Yan siya. So, ito, pag nababad na sa infiltrating medium, pumasok na yung para finuwak sa loob. Now, it's firmer. Firm. Firm. Mas, uh, hindi na siya malambot. Yan. Kasi may pumasok na na supporting media sa loob. And after embedding, ito na yung kakalabasan niya. So, ipi-place mo lang siya sa mold. So, dadagdagan mo pa ng, uh, ng media, ng paraffin wax. Yan, para maging tissue black. Okay. So, yan. Same thing rin. So, ito guys. So, siguro hindi pa ito napaprocess. Oh, Tignan nyo ito, may mga butas. Guys. So, ang, ang purpose ng infiltrating media is fill up the holes. So, hindi ako makakita ng same image na ganito rin. Pero ito, oh, it's a sign yung may mga puti-puti na na may wax na sa loob na fill up na yung mga butas. Okay? At eventually, magiging tissue block. Yan. So, ito, ito na, hindi pa tumitigas. Ayan, na-infiltrate sila. Tapos, i-orient sa isang mold, aayusin para maging tissue block. Okay? So, yan ang goal natin. Ang end product, guys, ng infiltration is ganito. Na-fill up lang muna yung mga butas. At ang end product, guys, ng embedding is maging tissue block. Okay? Malinaw ba? So, the purpose of infiltration is to fill up the holes, the cavities of the tissue to provide support to make it um to make it uh, to make the consistency firm so that it could withstand cutting okay and now for embedding so we place it in a mold and arrange it properly to facilitate cutting as well so yeah what is embedding so the other name of embedding are blocking and casting yeah so you make it in a block turn it into a block, tissue block, and cast or cast, yeah, mold or cast. 
Yan. The process by which the impregnated tissue is placed in a precisely arranged position. Okay? So that is... So actually, guys, if the, the if you don't know how to arrange or orient the tissue, the pathologist will actually instruct you on how you will arrange it, okay? But we have general guidelines kung paano mag-arrange. So guys, eventually, so mag-intern kayo and you don't know how to uh, orient it or precisely arrange it in the mold, you could ask your pathologist or sometimes there, we have different protocols, eh. Yan. So I'll we'll talk about it as we go on. And so so the tissue was removed from the cassette after impregnating and now yon inarrange niya inarrange na yung tissue ng maayos dun sa mold tapos nilagyan na ng wax pinuno na ng wax. Ayun. So this is a paraffin dispenser. Yan, ito yung paraffin dispenser. So, punuin mo, tapos ilagay mo sa loob yung, yung wax, ay yung wax, yung tissue. Yan, tapos i-arrange mo. So, ganun ang embedding na or casting. So, ang ganda-ganda nitong embedding medium class, um, embedding center. So, hindi pa ako nakakakita ng ganito sa totoong buhay. I'll ask my BGH. Wala na kasi masyadong friends sa BGH. Eh. Sige, I'll find... I'll find them, my friends if <laughs> meron silang embedding media uh, center sa, sa kanila. Okay, so ang ganda nito. Okay, and this is not, I don't know if, if who has this in the Philippines. I'll ask. Sa St. Luke's, ganyan. So, ito guys, ito na yung molten wax reservoir. Yan, this is the dispenser, wax flow adjuster. So, dito lalabas yung wax dispenser. So, yung iba, guys, yung wax dispenser, hiwalay, since wala silang ganito. Eh, ito, embedded na. Wow, it adjusts the wax. Yan. Meron tayong cold plates. Yan. So, pagkalagay mo ng wax, dun mo patitigasin dito sa cold plates. Cold plates at are, are at negative 5 degrees Celsius. So, kung wala ka namang cold plate, pwede mong i-riff. Tapos, yung temperature rin dapat negative 5 degrees Celsius. Okay? Hot surface. Ayan. So, yung surface may pagka-hot to, continue, to continuously melt the paraffin. So, guys, ang paraffin, siguro yung mga maximum, depending on the depending on the manufacturer's requirement. Ha? Pero maximum na na-heat ng oven, guys, is 60 degrees Celsius. Yan. So, guys, mainit ang paraffin. No? So, ang isa sa mga disadvantage, guys, ng using paraffin wax is you cannot use it on um, enzymatic if you are or want to get the enzymes or if you want to view the enzymes. Kasi sinisira niya ang enzyme kasi 60 degrees Celsius ang protein magde-denature sa mainit na temperature. Okay? So it's not good for detecting enzymes ang paraffin. Ang lipids rin. Yan, kasi matutunaw ang lipids. So ang yung mga cassette, yung mga mold, it is in a heated area. Yan, para matunaw kung may mga excess paraffin sa cassette, yan, to be reused, yan, galing, no? So, heated chambers. So, zoom in. So, ito yung embedding medium. Ayan yung dispenser. Ayan, tapos, yun, i, um, dito na dispense yung paraffin wax. And now, you would now open your cassette, then orient the orient the tissue inside it. Yan. Then cover it with a co with a cassette. Yan. Tatakpan mo lang. Tapos, pag lumamig na, pwede mo nang tanggalin. Yan. Bago mo ka ganito. Okay. Tinatakpan ng cassette. Yan. Isang side ng cassette. Pwede mo tanggalin. Tapos, didikit yung anong block doon sa cassette. Ang galing, no? Yan. Kasi the cassette could also uh, serve as a label. Okay. So, embedding, casting, after it is sectioning. Yan. So, guys, notice, so, 
that you should arrange you should arrange the tissue in such a way that it's easier to section okay dapat nasa simula nasa dulo siya ng tissue block okay para mas madaling ma section okay so now ang outcome niya is a tissue ribbon tissue ribbon so guys kung hindi okay yung pag infiltrate mo yung pag embed mo hindi ka makakagawa ng magandang tissue ribbon yan so it it could crumble yan magpirapiraso it could break away pag hindi okay yung embed pag embed mo or sometimes guys pag masyadong mainit yung wax yan pag masyado mo namang napainit yung wax glass you are destroying the consistency of the paraffin and it is also easier to crumble pag masyado mo namang napainit ang paraffin wax at a very high temperature yon Maraming factors, no? So, to, ang ganda-ganda nitong tissue ribbon niya. So, yan. Para maka-achieve ng ganyan, dapat maayos ang pagka-infiltrate at embed mo. Yan. So, malaki yung factor ng pagpapainit ng embedding medium like paraffin wax. Yan. So, yan. So, what are your main examples of your embedding medium and infiltration medium? So, Um, we have paraffin wax, celloidine, gelatin, and plastic. Kasi kung ako nagkakamali, mga 11 yung i-discuss natin. So, these guys are an overview example kung ano yung mga gagamitin natin as embedding or infiltrating medium. So, pareho lang yan na medium or resin. Yan. So, paraffin wax is the most common uh, Embedding medium that we use. Yan. Celloidine, guys, is for hard tissues. Yan. Huwag nang kakalimutan. For, if you want to embed very hard tissue, celloidine is a very good support for that. Yan. Gelatin, agar, pag-uusapan na rin natin, and plastic. So, plastic is good for electron microscope use. Yan. Kasi, plastic, you could cut it in a very thin, very thin section. Yan. It could withstand if you will cut it in a very thin section. Yan. Yung paraffin wax, celloidine, pag masyadong manipis yung, yung cut mo sa nila, yung width nila, width nung, nung tissue ribbon, magbabreak. Pero yung plastic, it's more durable. So maganda siya sa electron microscope kasi kailangan mas manipis yung tissue ribbon na gawin mo. So, characteristic of an infiltrating or embedding media, it should be soluble in processing fluid, it should be soluble in saline, kung ano-ano pa, suitable for sectioning and ribboning. So, make sure that your embedding medium, you could turn it into a tissue ribbon. Baka minsan masyado namang matigas, hindi mo na ma-turn into a ribbon. Yan. Its melting point should be between 30 degrees to 60 degrees. Not so much high. Hindi, hindi dapat masyado 100 degrees. Kasi pag masyadong mataas yung melting point niya, guys, ma so, mapiprito na yung ano natin, tissue natin pag masyadong mainit ang ginagamit na embedding medium. Okay? So, dapat ano, it only melts in a low melting point, okay? Kundi, ano, magigaril na yung tissue natin pag masyadong mainit, okay? The medium should be translucent or transparent. So, this one, this is paraffin. Kung yung mga lighter, hindi ako nagkakamali, baka gelatin yung mga yan or celloidine. Colorless, yan. So, it should not be affecting the staining of that tissue. It should be stable, homogeneous, capable of flattening after ribboning. Yan. It should be flat. Di ba? Yung kanina lang kita yung ribbon. Ang ganda-ganda. Flat siya. So, hindi dapat natutupi-tupi. Ganyan. Non-toxic, odorless, easy to handle, and expensive. Non-expensive. Okay. Affordable. So, ito, guys. Yan. So, our goal is to make good tissue section. Mas maganda yung kanina eh. Pero maganda rin to kasi manipis. So far naman, flat siya. So, one way para mas maging flat pa siya is we float it in a water bath to remove the crum, crum, crumple 
Di ba? Parang krampal-krampal siya. So, parang dumiretsyo yung tissue ribbon. Uh, pinafloat natin sa water bath. Ayan. So, ang ganda na yun, ng mga tissue blocks. So, notice, guys, may, may plano, may arrangement yung, may specific arrangement yung mag pagka-place sa, pagka-orient sa tissues, okay? It was not haphazardly done. Hindi ka tiyachamba-chamba lang kasi make sure na dapat nakikita yung mga hinahanap ng pathologist na parts, okay? So, factors that affects our embedding medium. So, laboratory temperature. So, when we perform, guys, okay na ang room temperature, okay? So, the, um, the temperature of the laboratory is at room temperature and the paraffin oven, yan. So, it's very crucial, class, ang pagpapainit sa paraffin wax mo. So, you have to follow the recommended Uh, melting point of the manufacturer okay so magkakaiba ang ang paraffin wax okay depende dun sa gumawa so usually the paraffin oven is set 2 to 5 degrees higher than the melting point of the wax so kung sa lalagyan sa instructor's manual in manufacturer's manual ay 56 degrees celsius ang melting point ng paraffin Iset mo sa 2 degrees to 5 degrees higher. So kung 56 yung melting point ng wax, i-add 2 mo. 58 to 56 plus 5, 61 degrees high. And yun lang. Okay, yun lang. Yun lang yung temperature hanggang 61 na yung pinakamataas mo. Okay, 61. So okay lang yung 61. Kasi nasa melting point pa tayo ng wax, okay? However, okay, you have to be careful. No more than 60 degrees, yan. Siguro mga 65, yan. Mas mataas pa. Beyond, kumbaga, beyond the manufacturer's recommendation, guys, it could impact their tissues, di ba? Sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, hindi ka pwede mag, mag gumamit ng paraffin wax if you want to see the histochemic, hi, um, the enzymes, if you want to Uh, show the enzymes of the tissue, okay? Because it could denature the enzymes. And so what else, guys? Pag masyadong mainit, 70 degrees Celsius yung paraffin oven mo, it could shrink, it could dry, it could make it brittle yung tissue mo and difficult to section. So ingat tayo sa pagpapainit sa paraffin. Napaka-crucial nun. So number of changes. So guys, in infiltration, we change at least two changes. So minimum yan, okay? Minimum yan, two changes. Of course, di ba, you have to remove the clearing agent. Kaya kailangan mo ng fresh new paraffin wax, okay? Guys, kailangan mura ang embedding medium mo kasi you have changes to do eh. Yan, kailangan mong itapon yung lumang paraffin wax, okay? Kasi nga may, may ano dun eh, silin dun. So, if there is, if you are dipping your tissue in a paraffin with silin, okay, mahirap mag-infiltrate siya. And the larger and denser the organ that you, that you are infiltrating, the more changes that you will need, okay? The clearing agent use, mas madali daw matanggal, ma-displace ang silin at benzene compared to chloroform and cedar wood oil. Mas, mas mahirap sila matanggal. And guys, the volume must be about 25 times the embedding medium. And here I read in Bancroft, sabi niya, low melting point waxes has high up, higher paraffin concentration and will provide a softer matrix. Mas soft yung consistency, guys. Pag yung wax na binili nyo, may lower melting point. Okay? However, waxes with higher polymer content, um, polymer are networks of molecules. Yan. So pag mas maraming polymer yung wax, It has, it is for denser tissues. Mas matigas yung consistency pag mas mataas yung melting point. It gives a higher, 
a harder matrix. Yan. So, kunyari, guys, kunyari bones. Yan, bones. So, kung dahil dito, sabi ni Bancroft, kunyari bones na decalcified, mas maganda gamitin mo yung mga paraffin wax na may mataas na na polymer kasi mas matigas yon it could, it provides better support yan pero ang, ang matindi doon guys kailangan sharp talaga yung knife mo matibay yung microtome mo it could withstand cutting into harder or denser tissues okay so yon depende saan kung maliliit lang naman na tissue ang itetest mo, okay na yung mga low, low, melt, low melting point wax. However, pag malalaki, needs more support, like bones, like teeth, yan, dapat matikas, mas matikas rin yung embedding medium mo. So, what are the ways of impregnating and Im embedding? Focus more tayo sa impregnation. So, class sa infiltrating. So, after two changes of clearing, four changes ng paraffin wax. Ah, yun to kay Gregorio, kas apat daw. So, 15 minutes sa first, 15 minutes sa second, 15 minutes sa third, and 15 minutes sa fourth. Okay? So, after four changes, after one hour, na-infiltrate na, nakapasok na yung paraffin wax sa loob. Okay? Sa, sa automatic processors naman, ito, logos. Yan, kakapanood ko sa ang, ang ganda na itong logos na machine na to. So, uh, itong logos, I think it's a tissue flu, fluid transfer. Yan, hindi ko magalaw ito. Itong mga kaset. You know, guys, ang bilis, ang, you could process so many cassettes at one time. So, guys, I want you, kunyari, may dumating sa inyo na malaking uh, organ. Example, one of the com most common organ dumating sa laboratory for histopath is tabiso. So, kompleto yun. May, may palopian tube, may, uh, may, you may the may bahay bata English endometrium basta guys pag mas, minsan mal, malaki yung mga organ mas maraming tissue section ang pini-prepare ng pathologist mas marami siyang gustong makita Okay, so minsan hindi lang isang kaset ang ang ginagamit for one organ. Minsan maraming kaset. So here, you could uh, you could process so many kaset at one time. Yan. So yun napapabilis yung turn around time sa histopath. Kasi pag mas mali kasi 'di ba ang turn around time natin sa histopath, sabihin natin siguro mga one day tapos na yung tissue processing. <coughs> Pero next, hihintay mo pa yung pathologist. Siyempre, i-confirm niya pa. Ganyan, babasahin niya. Baka may gusto pa siyang makita. Ganyan. So, pwedeng pa ulitin niya. So, mga one week plus ang turnaround time sa histopath. So, since ito, you could process so many cassette in one machine, then it and increases the, the turnaround time in the section. So, kung sa manual processing, four changes daw. Sa so, automatic, two to three changes. And, ano, bumibilis kasi there is an agitation. Um, dito, guys, ito yung tissue tech natin. It's an automatic processor, pero kasi may vacuum siya. Okay? So, class, um, one way to facilitate to increase the speed of embedding and infiltration, guys, is through placing it under negative pressure or under a vacuum. So, under 400 to 500 millimeter mercury of pressure. Yan. Kung baga pressure cooker. Yan. It has three changes. Yan. So, if you want to accelerate your processing, if it's urgent, yung mga uh, makakapal, dense, fibrous connective tissue, at yung mga delicate, then, Yan, you could use vacuum embedding or infiltration. Yan. For lungs, brain, decalcified bones, eye splints, and yun, CNS brain, ba? So, for vacuum. So, itong oven na to, 
it has pressure gauge. Yan. So, wala siyang heat, guys. So, you place it under pressure lang. Para mas madaling ma-displace yung clearing, mas madaling pumasok yung paraffin wax. Yan. So, the disadvantage of... However, ayun, yung double check if there is heat, okay? Because it could make the tissue brittle, shrink, and harden. Alam ko, hindi masyado mataas ang heat nito. So, class, ito, tissue tech. May vacuum siya, but no heat except to melt your paraffin wax. So, andito, four changes naman siya for 30 minutes. So, this is only infiltration, ha? Infiltration yan. So, may vacuum yan. To facilitate the entry of your infiltrating medium. So, guys, ito. Um, wala lang. I was just curious about um, biopsy of the eyes at sobrang, ano, kadiri. <laughs> So, yan. Pero mahalaga, guys. Diba? So, to save the other eye, so we need to diagnose or biopsy the one eye. So, class, notice how the, how, how delicate it is. So, if you don't want the walls to crumble, diba? Yung wall, yung slera ba to? Yung circle na yan. Para mag-crumble, ganito yung pagkakat niya, oh. So, class, eh, you know, Dapat ino-orient ng maayos yung, yung mata, yung tissue, para nakikita kung anong gustong yung mga layers, and kung anong gustong makita ng doktor. Diba? Grabe yung mata. So, let's tackle your infiltrating and embedding media. So, first and most important, guys, is your paraffin wax. Simple, most common, and best. So, this is routinely used in the laboratory okay the most common melting point of this one is 56 to 58 degrees celsius yan so so far yon yung incubator is up to 60 degrees celsius lang 55 or para yung paraffin oven glass 55 to 60 degrees celsius the maximum is 60 degrees celsius okay so 2 to 5 degrees celsius so, paraffin wax should be pure and filtered before use. Okay? You could reuse it, but only twice. So, so to make sure, to make your block beautiful, walang mga crumbs, may mga itim-itim, ganyan. Kung baga, ba pag nagprito ka, guys, isn't it na sa dulo ng... Um, ewan ko nagpaprito kayo ah. Diba? After nyo mag-fry, may mga maliliit na crumbs na naiiwan. So, same thing guys with uh, tissue processing. Sometimes may mga ganun, may mga tissue crumbs na naiiwan. It, fell, it, fell, it, it fell off the tissue. So, yan. Filter it before use using a filter paper. Yan. Ensure that it is pure. The last change of paraffin should be clean, okay? And yung yung pang-embed rin, guys, yung galing sa paraffin dispenser, guys, dapat never been used before, okay? So, water is removed by heating the wax up to 100 to 105. So, guys, hindi maganda yung tissue block kung may tubig. So, to remove the wax, the water, it's heated up to 100 to 105. However, guys, the, the, the disadvantage or the consequence of this, guys, is it could, um, it could damage the plasticity, the, yung pag, kung baga pagiging rubberized nung, nung paraffin wax. Yan. So, I suggest palitan nyo na lang, tapon nyo na lang. Don't hit the paraffin wax so hot. Okay, advantage of paraffin wax. So, you could do serial sections. Yung serial sections, maraming section na tuloy-tuloy. Yan. Kasi sometimes, um, may mga embedding medium na pag masyado ka ng maraming kinakat, guys, uh, nagdi-distort na, hindi na maganda yung tissue ribbon. 
But in paraffin wax, even though you're cutting a lot of section, continuous section, and it is without distortion, it is for rapid processing. Because notice, after one hour, you are already done with infiltration. Does not distort the tissue, even if it is immersed for a long time. Sabi ni Gregorius. But in other books, in other places of Gregorius, it would cause brittleness. Yan. So, so far naman yung nakita ko, not more than four hours. Yan. So, you could place it more than one hour, but do not extend too much. Okay. And staining has good results. What else? Ito, overheated paraffin makes the specimen brittle. So I don't suggest heating it at up to 100 degrees Celsius. Prolonged impregnation will cause excessive tissue shrinkage, hardening. Inadequate impregnation will re promote retention of the clearing agent. So magiging soft, hindi ba? So ito, bones, teeth, brain, teeth. Teeth, brain, and eyes need longer immersion to, for proper support. Yan. Pero itong mga bone teeth, magsaloidin ka na lang. Okay? Pero kung para finwax lang meron, mas matagal mo silang infiltrate. Okay? Prolonged immersion is not advisable. <laughs> Kasi nga, yung first nakalagay does not distort in if it is immersed for a long time. Yan. So... It's a question mark. So, siguro maximum four, four hours na lang. Para fo, paraffin is not for fatty tissues. Yan, because it will melt it out. Okay. So, yan. Just a review. So, prolonged treatment in melted paraffin will cause shrinkage and hardening. So, do not dip it or immerse it for very long. Infiltration in overheated paraffin has shrinkage and hardening. So use a filter paper to remove any dirt, any dust that um that was that is in your paraffin wax. So guys, for using a fixed knife microtome, yung mga common microtome. Use a wax with higher melting point so that it will not crumble. Ayan, it is firm. So remove water. And yon. So hindi siya good for lipid investigation, for enzymes, for making thinner section for electron microscopy. Ang electron microscopy usually mga plastic and undel and decalcified bone. Okay. It does not give enough. Support. So, pag ang decalcified boy, bone, celloy, din. Okay? So, class, melted paraffin. So, the melting point is 5 to 10 above the... Saan ko ba nakuha ito? Yan. Let's, ano, let's take to 2 to 5 na lang, class. 2 to 5 para safe. Ah, sa embedding pala ito. Mag 2 to 5 na lang tayo. 2 to 5. Okay, next guys is refrigerate at negative 5 degrees Celsius. So once you already made your tissue block, yon, you could use cold plate or refrigerate at negative 5. At kung wala, immerse it in cold water. So embedding para tumigas into tissue block is 3 hours daw. Ayan, ito yung cold plate. Oh. Diyan pwede mo palamagin yung tissue block. So, we're done, guys, with paraffin. So, yung susunod na mga i-discuss natin are substitutes for paraffin. Next, guys, is paraplast. So, these are substitutes of paraffin. So, paraffin plus is paraffin plus synthetic plastic polymers. So there's a little bit of plastic just that was added and its melting point is 56 to 57 degrees Celsius. And I remember again, we were using this in the laboratory. So yun, it's resilient. Resilient, adato, more elastic and resilient. It's good also for bones and brain compared to your normal paraffin. 
it ha it could be used for double embedding. However, guys, I was reading that ayon meron din tayong agar, okay? So agar is a type of media that is usually used for double embedding as well. Kasi um, it could not withstand alone, okay? So just take note. So mababasa niyo to sa para plus yan. So it gives good support for bones and brain unlike if you are just using paraffin okay so it's better for rebuilding section mas na elevate lang tong para plus siguro are cut with ease serial sections are cut with ease without cooling the tissue block yan. so yan one disadvantage of um cooling your tissue block is there could be ice crystal that would be formed. So, yun lang. Okay. But this is rare. So, what else, guys? No deposits is left on the slide after staining. So, you could remove it with silene. No special processing is required. It is soluble in common clearing agents. Okay. So, on how... Same thing, kung paano pinaprocess ang paraffin, same rin ang pagprocess ng paraplast. Wow, wala siyang disadvantage. <laughs> Embedol, guys. So, this is also a wax substitute similar to paraplast. 56 to 58 ang melting point. Okay, so medyo mataas yung 58. Less brittle and less compressible. Less brittle and less compressible. So, more brittle ang paraplast kumpara sa embedol, okay? Bioloy, don't forget it. This is for the eyes. It's good for eyes, embedding the eyes. And tissue mat, it is similar with paraplast. However, it contains more rubber. And we have ester wax. So, it has lower melting point, but harder than paraffin. And it's not soluble in water since nga yung puro ester siya. Only in ethanol and clearing agent. So, um, water is a contamination when it comes to ester wax. Clearing may be skip. If not, it should be gradual. So, tignan natin dito. So, so if you're going to uh, clear, yan, cellulose and silene, so, equal parts of clearing reagent plus ester wax. So, dahan-dahan. So, may silene, tsaka may wax. So, 3 to 6 hours. Matagal. Dahil da da dahan-dahan mo siyang i-clear. Tapos, so, after that is 3 to 4 changes of pure ester wax. Then, now you could embed and use a heavy-duty microtome because it is harder than paraffin. It has a lower melting point. However, it's harder. So, maganda to sa mga dense na tissue. Okay. However, you need to find a heavy-duty microtome. So, yun yung may special processing ano lang siya requirement. We also have carbo wax. What's new about this, it's soluble in water. So guys, um, kailangan nila yung mo siya sa tubig kasi matutunaw siya sa tubig. It will dissolve in water. So it's for urgent processing because it does not require dehydration and clearing. Okay? And it does not remove neutral fats and lipids unlike your paraffin. So there's no heating involved guys here in carbo wax. So, ayun, hindi matatanggal yung lipids. Hindi rin matatanggal yung enzymes. So, sabi niya, enzyme for histochemical studies. However, hygroscopic. So, it attracts water. So, 70% for infiltration. So, 30 minutes at 70% carbo wax. 45 minutes at 90% carbo wax. And two times. So, two times at 100 degrees concentration at 56. May heat naman. Ah, uh, Okay. Mas, mas mababa siguro ng 4 degrees kung hindi 60 degrees Celsius. Ayan. Two times at 100% concentration of, at 56 degrees for 60 minutes. Two changes. So, one, two, three, four. 
Okay, so ganyan ang scheduling ng carbo wax. And embedding, so you will heat it at 50 degrees Celsius and cooled at refrigerator. So yung kakalimutan, negative 5 degrees Celsius ang cooling. So class, um, so I told you all ago that it's one of the important things that we need to do is properly embed or make a tissue block properly so that we can make tissue ribbons, okay? And your embedding medium, guys, so it should make your, rib, your ribbon should be flattened. So habang natatanggal, dapat actually less crumble and flat. Yan. Pero to remove the crumple, yan, we float it out in a flotation bath. Yan. So however, so to make, so sometimes there is floating out. Yan. So to, to make your ribbons float, yan, to gumagamit tayo ng pure solution or blank and McCarthy solution. I think this is for carbo wax. Yan. Kasi nagdi-dissolve siya sa tubig. So, kailangan ng floating solution. Yan, no? So, now, pagka-float mo dyan is you could now place it in a slide. Okay? Tapos, um, actually, you need an adhesive. So, one of the most common adhesive para dumikit yung tissue ribbon sa slide natin is egg albumin. Guys, egg albumin. Yung white ng egg. So, yun. Ito. So, carbo wax, add soap to water or use 10% polyethylene glycol. Yan. It reduces tissue distortion and promote floating off section. And you could use Pierce or Blanc and McCarthy solution. Yan. Add soap to water. So, yan. Low budget. Or 10% polyethylene glycol. Ang Kung class narinig nyo na ang polyethylene glycol, madalas sa blood banking to narinig. Yan. So, end of part 1.